Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to Behind the Mission, our special series where we discuss what it takes and what it's like to work with us here at the World Bank Group. I'm your host, Srimathi Sridhar, and today's conversation falls on the International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia, and Biphobia. And over the next 30 minutes or so, we'll be delving into LGBT plus issues at the World Bank Group. We'll be answering questions on diversity and inclusion, and why those in the LGBT plus community interested in international development should consider a career with us here at the World Bank Group. I'm delighted to be joined by three guests today, Kelly Wadelska, who is the Economic Inclusion Advisor for the Gender and Economic Inclusion Group at the International Finance Corporation, Clifton Cortez, the Global Advisor on Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity at the World Bank Group, and Jewel McFadden, a Publications Officer and Outreach and Inclusion Chair for GLOBE, the World Bank Group's LGBT plus Employee Business Resource Group. Now, before we get started, I wanna encourage those of you that are joining us online to share your questions in our comments section. And you can always join the conversation online with the hashtag behind the mission WBG. We look forward to hearing from you. With that, let's get our conversation started. Kelly, Cliff, Jewel, a part of the World Bank Group statement on our commitment to diversity and inclusion reads that as a global organization that has embraced the twin goals of ending extreme poverty and boosting shared prosperity, we are committed to fostering and strengthening diversity and inclusion in both our work and our workplace. We are committed to a workplace where everyone is valued, where differences are respected and celebrated, and where opportunity and equitable treatment is afforded to all. So let's unpack this a bit, guys, and talk more about what it means. Cliff, I want to start with you. As the first ever sexual orientation and gender identity global advisor at the World Bank Group, how does your job ensure LGBT plus inclusion in bank-supported projects? Thank you, Shri. I appreciate that. Uh, they asked me to say a little bit more about myself before I answered the question, so I'll just say, uh, let folks know that I've actually spent 25 plus years in international development, and all of that time I've been fortunate in that I've been able to work at the intersection of sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, and sex characteristics, uh, and international development, inclusive development, um, as I said, for all of that time. Uh, in the earliest days, that was related to HIV, and that's why, but that's, I've been fortunate in that. So, in terms of how we're able to move this work in the bank operations itself, that is, what the bank does in the world, uh, it's really two things. One very important focus for the bank is generating data and analytics to inform our clients and underpin policy and program reform in our client countries. That's what that's for. And as we all know, Data is a huge gap for us, what we know about our lives, about LGBTI people's lives across various sectors uh, is a big missing piece of the puzzle. And the bank can play a leadership role, is playing a leadership role in addressing that. The other part is in the environmental and social framework, which is really, these are essentially legal obligations that come with every loan agreement between ourselves and a client. And I'll talk a little bit more later about what that is and I'll unpack it. But those are sort of the tools we use to move this agenda of LGBTI people's inclusion. Looking forward to that, Cliff, thank you. And Kelly, let me now turn over to you. You've been a longtime advocate of LGBT plus rights at the World Bank Group, and you're leading the International Finance Corporation's efforts on the inclusion of sexual and gender minorities in operations. Tell us more about how the environment for LGBT plus employees has improved over the years. Thanks, Sri, and hello to everybody who is joining us um, live on LinkedIn Live and World Bank Group Live. It's fabulous to be here, especially to commemorate IDHOT. Um, I've been with the bank group around almost 10 years, and previous to that, I came from the private sector. In terms of improvement, I think there's really three areas where I've seen some improvement, um, and you know, saying 10 years makes me feel a little bit old. But uh, the first area is really around our policies and procedures. And we've, we've done that working with HR. So we benchmarked our policies against best practice. We found opportunities for improvement. We did this working with the Human Rights Council. Uh, we checked our language and our structures um, of our policy uh, language and then looked at you know, maternity and paternity and have changed maternity and paternity to parental leave, making it more inclusive we added child planning benefit for LGBT couples. Um, G4 visas have 
as far as I've been at the bank, have always been provided for LGBT spouses. I was able to take advantage of that. And we've also started to move the need a little bit on trans inclusive um, engagement and especially trans inclusive healthcare. And we changed again the language of our policies to be more inclusive. So that's the kind of the first lens, the policies and procedures lens, where we've seen some, some good incremental change. The second one is around safety and security. And, and this is critical because you know, we're a global organization and the security of our staff is paramount. And we're working in you know, some really challenging contexts. Um, and our staff are living and working there. So Globe and HR have worked with our security teams to help them build their awareness and response to some of the issues that have been faced by LGBT staff um, to make sure they better understand their needs and can have them met. And the third piece is really around culture change. And this is the most tricky thing in every organization. And we've definitely seen some improvements here. The World Bank Group Globe Resource Group is 25 years plus old. That's really helped build community and engagement. We have lots of active role models who are out there, like my colleagues, Cliff and um, Jewel. Um, and we also have a lot of straight allies who are also a big champion for greater inclusion. Um, and I guess the third piece is that we're all living in times where there is an increased awareness of LGBTQ um, lived experience. So you see it on the internet, it's on television, and that's really helped change perceptions. So definite improvements, but there is always more to do. Back to you, Shree. Thanks, Kelly, for giving us some of these updates here. And let's, you know, let's talk a bit more about Globe. Jewel, last but, uh, but, lot, but not least, let me turn to you. As the Outreach and Inclusion Chair for Globe, which is the World Bank Group's LGBT plus employee business resource group, how would you say Globe ensures that the LGBT plus community is included? Uh, I mean, can you give us some examples of some initiatives that you're focused on to support LGBT plus colleagues? Absolutely. Um, so hi, everyone from joining on LinkedIn. I mean, I'll just add prior to joining the bank, I was a journalist uh, for 10 plus years um, and now enjoy the role of outreach and inclusion chair for Globe. Um, so I'll say that over the years, we've worked with HR to update the language in World Bank rules and policies to be more LGBT inclusive. We've collaborated with the Diversity and Inclusion Unit, as well as the Global Mobility Team um, to develop a guide specifically for LGBT staff at the bank. And this guide includes considerations when preparing for a mission or country office assignment. We also hold social gatherings, uh, virtual for now, of course, um, to build community, um, as well as educational events where we bring in external expertise around issues related to sexual and gender minorities. We also coordinate with the World Bank uh, senior staff and the corporate security, as Kelly mentioned, on safety issues um, for our LGBT employees and their families. Um, we obviously have staff stationed around the world, so it's super important for us to stay abreast of hostile situations uh, and, and suggest intervention when necessary. We actually hold trainings with corporate security specialists about LGBT specific security challenges um, and advise on ways to ensure better awareness of those risks. Um, and so all of these initiatives are ongoing, but I'll, I'll also add that we now have the results from our 2020 Globe Workplace Climate Survey, uh, which assesses the inclusion status of LGBT employees at the bank. And we've been presenting um, some of these insights and highlights from the survey to country directors um, in hopes of generating conversation and building allyship. Um, so those are just a few ways that we're working super hard to make sure that the, the bank is a better and more inclusive place. Thanks, Kelly. And uh, I mean, sorry, thanks, Jewel and Clifton and Kelly, you know, for giving us an introduction, but also providing some examples into how LGBT plus inclusion is a part of the bank group's operations and workplace. Uh, folks, if you're just joining us, you're watching Behind the Mission, where today's episode delves into LGBT plus issues at the World Bank Group. I'm speaking with Kelly Wadelska, who is the Economic Inclusion Advisor for the Gender and Economic Inclusion Group at the International Finance Corporation, with Clifton Cortez, the Global Advisor on sexual orientation and gender identity at the World Bank Group, and Jewel McFadden, who is a publications officer and also outreach and inclusion chair for GLOBE, the World Bank Group's LGBT plus employee business resource group. I want to thank you all so much for joining us here. And I actually want to take a moment now to look at some of the online questions that have come in for today's program. We've got a question here that asks, 
You mentioned that the bank is a leader in LGBT plus inclusion, but can you tell us what that leadership looks like beyond the work that is being done in operations? Cliff, let me turn this question over to you. Absolutely, thank you for that, Shree. Um, well, I think that the World Bank has been pushing this agenda with other multilateral development banks. So this was on our own agenda before it was on any of theirs. And that, that engagement has been with the Asian Development Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank, the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, and also with the Africa Development Bank. But it's with the first three, the ADB, the IDB, and the EBRD, that we've really th seen things move along in the course of the time that we've had these discussions, such that all three of them are formally incorporating SOGI inclusion into what they do, will be doing operationally. And I know at the same time, they've been talking to GLOBE, their GLOBEs, and move, trying to move the needle in terms of bringing them where the bank is on internal policies for staff. And then finally, I would just note, we also are having this discussion in more recent times with the International Monetary Fund, IMF, which is a sister organization of the World Bank, and which is also now very interested in this agenda, at least in operations, what the implications are for the macro level economic analysis. And Cliff, one more question here from a viewer in Cameroon um, who, who says, how can the World Bank leverage its influence to support LGBT plus individuals in countries that criminalize queer identities? Is it possible to make financing contingent upon ensuring these protections? Yeah, wow, tough, tough context in Cameroon, particularly in recent days, uh, but also in other countries around the world, not just in Cameroon, right? Um, so I, I think the World Bank believes that we can move the inclusion agenda most effectively by working with the client governments and particularly showing them that discrimination is costly to people and economies and that non-discrimination leads to better development outcomes. So in line with this, what we're focusing on is first through policies like the environmental and social framework. I mentioned it before. I said I was going to unpack it later. I'll do that now. Uh, and that ESF, the environmental and social framework, these are legal obligations that become a part of every uh, uh, investment finance project of the bank with a client and that require non-discrimination. And that includes on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. And so we're working with them through the, that process, those processes. And what that specifically entails is that we will engage with LGBTI NGOs in the countries in which we work to gather information from them about what their challenges are in specific sectors that may be impacted by specific kinds of projects. And we haven't done one yet in Cameroon, but we have done these missions in many other countries in Sub-Saharan Africa and in West Africa. And you can believe that we're coming soon to Cameroon. And so that's one of the ways that we support bringing that information out through the bank's processes to try to help support the client's understanding of these issues. At the same time, we're building the capacity of clients and, and our staff giving trainings on to be able to apply a SOGI lens to the work that they do or to a specific project. And then finally, I said before that we're really in the business also of generating data and analytics. That's the research that supports the positive development outcomes for LGBTI people. And that's what the bank is going to focus on. Thank you so much, Cliff, for answering those two questions. And, you know, folks, if you're watching us online, continue to engage with us and share with us your questions and your comments. And we you know we look forward to getting to them later in the program and after the program ends as well. Now, before we get to our last question, I do want to pivot for a moment to our myth busting segment. We do this for every Behind the Mission episode. It's a quick fire way of dispelling some commonly held myths about working here at the World Bank Group. So Kelly and Jewel, I'm going to come to you with these two myths. The first myth says that it is not advisable to identify as LGBT plus when working at the World Bank Group. Jewel, let me turn this one over to you. Sure. Um, I would say this myth is neither true or false. Um, the decision to be out in the workplace is a personal one. Um, I'm an out and proud lesbian, but I, I believe it should be based on an individual's comfort level. Um, our 2020 workplace climate survey revealed that only 28% of LGBT respondents say that they're out at the World Bank. Um, however, I think it's important to consider that there are many variables outside of the workplace that impact whether a person wants to openly identify as LGBT. Um, outside of the workplace, we all have a place we call home 
And if the place you call home criminalizes or stigmatizes homosexuality or your familial circle is unaccepting, um, those are all valid reasons why you may weigh the decision to be out in the workplace differently than your peers. Um, nearly 2.8 billion people live in countries where identifying as LGBT is subject to discrimination, criminalization, or even death. Um, that said, we continue to work in creating an environment where, where LGBT staff feel that they can be their authentic self at work. Um, we've made vast improvements over the years, including extending the health insurance coverage and G4 visas to same-sex domestic partners, including child planning benefits for same-sex couples, changing our parental leave policy to be non-gender specific, and covering gender affirmation surgery for transgender staff in our medical insurance plan. Thank you so much for that, Jewel. Now, myth number two says that not all countries are welcoming of the LGBT plus community. So LGBT plus applicants are less likely to find work at the World Bank group. Kelly, what's your take on that? So one, it is true that not all countries are welcoming of the LGBT plus community, unfortunately. However, it is false that LGBTQ plus applicants are less likely to find work at the bank. I arrived almost 10 year, years ago from the private sector as an out lesbian in a leadership position as the global head of knowledge and learning for the IFC. I was able to take advantage of the G4 visa for my spouse. Um, and I had even put my previous employee resource group um, experience onto my CV because those kind of leadership experiences that you have in organ other organizations are part of who you are as a leader and as a manager, and they've made you who you are. So it's important to put those on the CV. Um, and I had no qualms about doing any of that. However, as Jewel was mentioning, I do understand the concern, but I want to reiterate that the World Bank Group is totally committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Back to you, Sri. Thank you so much. So, you know, Kelly, Jewel, I think it's really important that we bust these myths, right? Because it's important for folks that are tuning in to know what is true out there and what is false when it comes to opportunities to work with us here. So you know, before we now close with the final question, I actually wanted to make a mention that the World Bank Group in fostering a more inclusive workplace across countries and cultures, but also in helping staff become more aware about biases on sexual orientation and gender offers a full learning journey on unconscious bias, which includes an innovative approach to developing empathy regarding sexual orientation and gender identity through virtual reality. It's called Picture Yourself Included, and it's a VR tool that immerses you in real life interactions that may be inclusive or non-inclusive, and it invites you to judge for yourself about the impact that that has on the work environment. I mean, I personally think that is just so cool and amazing that we're doing that. And I really just wanted to share that here as we talk about LGBT plus inclusion at our institution. So let me close by asking your thoughts on this if you have them, but to also answer this final question, which is why would you say that the LGBT plus international community should consider a career in international development with us here at the World Bank Group? And Jewel, let me start with you. Uh, sure thing. I, I absolutely think that LGBT um, persons should consider a career in international development, especially if you have a passion for doing meaningful work and you want to play a small part in improving the standard of living for marginalized uh, people. Um, and as we've said through, throughout this episode, you know, the World Bank as an institution is committed to fostering an inclusive workplace. Um, and you have GLOBE here, you have the SOGI Task Force here, um, and we're here advocating for LGBT staff, and we would love to have you. Thank you, Jewel. Cliff, let me move over to you. What would you say? Well, uh, Shri, I'm going to start with that, uh, the issue you last raised on the virtual reality track. Yeah. So I was, I was a part of uh, the, the team that helped put that together and roll it out. And I'll say the thing that I'm proud about is the fact that this was the first investment in virtual reality training for staff by the World Bank. And they decided that it was going to be on these issues, on LGBTI staff, on SOGI issues. Um, and the other thing is that we, I've taken it with me when I do those, tr those trainings I told you for staff and clients and engaging with LGBTI NGOs and countries. So I went, we went to Malaysia, for instance, one of them, a number of examples I could use. And 90% of the chat, it's all voluntary. 90% of the staff of a fairly big office 
signed up to, to partake or to, to, to experience that virtual reality uh, training uh, and very positive outcomes from that and positive inputs from them from doing that, many of them of whom are national staff from Malaysia itself, a place that's not necessarily all that welcoming to LGBTI people. Um, then I would really do want to say something, respond to your last question uh, in terms of um, why somebody else should consider a, a career at the bank. Um, I've worked for in three development institutions in the 25 years that I've worked in development, USAID, UNDP, and now the World Bank. And they're all, they're all fine, worthy institutions. But again and again, the World Bank sets the international development standards. Uh, and that's true, including in this, on the issues that I work on, which are LGBTI inclusion. Um, so the World Bank's taking cutting, the cutting edge uh, issues in development, like SOGI inclusion. And regardless of the issues, though, that you might work on if you came to the bank, a career where the bank is going to be challenging, it's going to be exciting, and it's going to be rewarding. Very well put, Cliff. Thank you for that. And finally, Kelly, let me come over to you. Thanks, Shri. Um, I think I just echo Cliff and Jewel on the, the VR. Um, that was really transformational for a lot of people. Because a bit like unconscious bias, you're trying to find those aha moments where people go, oh, yeah, that is a different experience than the one I'm experiencing. So the VR was really a really useful tool because it allowed people to you know, embrace a subject which they may or may not feel comfortable with you know, in the, you know, their own little vision view. Um, and they could they could then process it. And I think it, it was really helpful. It's the same with Cliff. We've kind of rolled it out across our, some of our IFC uh, country offices as well. So yeah, it's it was fantastic. It was great to see that the bank had really invested in that um, as one of those first um, areas. In terms of why should you come and work here uh, and consider a career in international development? Well, one, it's pretty cool to say that you're an international civil servant. I feel a little bit like James Bond sometimes. Um, two, it's a huge opportunity, as Jewel was saying, to impact and shape you know, more inclusive international development. And we know that bringing diverse voices um, to the table makes better decisions. And we need to have LGBT voices at the table to help us make better policies with our clients and also engage the private sector. Um, it's the most international place I've ever worked and I've had many global roles so many nationalities and cultures and countries and food, which is also a fantastic opportunity to work here at the IFC and the, the World Bank, um, because there is so much great food. Um, and there's also an amazing commitment from everybody that I have worked in to really solve some of the most challenging development, uh, well, challenging development challenges. And who doesn't want to be a part of that? So apply, come and work for us. It will be great. Back to you, Sri. Thanks, Kelly. It really is an experience like none other, right? And I've never thought about it as a James Bond kind of experience, but now I, that's all I'm going to think about. <laughs> so Kelly, Clifton, Jewel, with that, I want to thank you all so much for joining me here today on Behind the Mission to talk more about diversity and inclusion at the World Bank Group as it pertains to LGBT plus issues. I've learned so much here today, and it's really been a pleasure speaking with the three of you. So thanks again. Thank you, Trey. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. And a big thanks to you, our online audience, for joining us here today. We hope you learned something new and that our conversation has inspired you to join us in our work to end poverty. Now, if you join the conversation late or you simply want to watch it back at a later time, a replay will be available on our World Bank LinkedIn channel as well as on World Bank Live. That's live.worldbank.org, where you can also catch up on past Behind the Mission episodes as well as other live series and events. For the latest career openings, be sure to visit our job site and stay connected to us. Give us a follow. We're on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can always follow along using the hashtag Behind the Mission WBG. I'm Srimathi Sridhar. Thanks again so much for being here, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.